talking about uh, the emerging low carbon sustainable enterprise economy. What does it mean to you? Probably in the context of the Japanese, uh, the industry and Japanese companies, uh, which have um, some technologies for um, contributing to sustainable economy, I would say that um, probably um, it's very important to uh, utilize and uh, transfer and utilize these advanced technologies to uh, countries such as Japan. And I think to do that, we need to have um, innovations in the technological sense, uh, but also uh, uh, the institutional sense, which means that the, uh, different players have different incentives in um, making and utilizing technology. So uh, I think we need to have a kind of coherent systems for um, um, <coughs> make sure that incentives of different players are compatible with each other. Okay. It's uh, certainly very important and the Ministry of Environment is making the rules more stringent and every state in India has got its own a pollution and environmental control board which is responsible for implementing all these emission control measures. So there's a lot more awakening. There is a bit of resistance from the uh, organizations as they find it, it not to be, they feel it's not cost effective, but gradually it's coming in a big way. But talking of my present job where I am working as an NGO, it means very little to the people, to the ordinary man. Industry, yes, and they are forced to follow this. Some do it willingly, some don't do it as willingly as it should be done. But to the common man in the village, I think, yes, they understand the necessity of this, but their priorities are different. So they would rather, their struggle for survival or removal or elimination of poverty or at least trying to live a more decent life takes much higher priority than lower emission control. From your perspective, what are the most important issues in making progress towards this new economy? First thing I would feel is if we have to touch the lives of many more people, that is the farmer, basically India is an agricultural economy, even though industrialization has taken, in a, taken up in a big way. First step I would feel is that the larger bulk of population which depends upon agriculture or agriculture related activities if their income levels go up, if they have enough money or enough resources to live a, lead a better life, they would become more responsible in ensuring that the other carbon climate change measures that the government is asking for are implemented with more effectively. Are implemented more effectively. India is well known for its mangoes. Yep. Exporting mango yeah. a lot of countries, yeah. Yeah. including the US. Yeah. But what happens is, because of delayed rainfall, Flowering comes up in the, at the right time, but then immediately after that, while the flowers are still there and the fruits have not been formed, it rains. Whereas the rain should have been much earlier. Mm. He loses his crop. He understands that. So his immediate question is survival and not climate change. We, we need to somehow assess, measure this the progress. Um, that is, uh, I think, what is important in uh, this moment because we don't know whether um, we are moving towards sustainability or not because we don't have a um, common understanding of what it means to sustainability. So I think as academia, that will be very, very important. Sustainability is not only climate control. Mm. Economic sustainability. Social sustainability. Social sustainability. Cultural sustainability. Mm -hmm. I think these are equally important especially from the perspective of a developing country. And climate control certainly is important. I'm not underplaying its uh, importance. But I think these uh, the other questions of daily survival probably t are far more important to the common man. Given what we know about politics, economics, and technology today, what one thing would you like to see happen immediately? Mm. But immediately that we have uh, this the Copenhagen conference in December. In December. Um, then that probably we need to have, um, well, although it is said that it's now very difficult to have some kind of agreement on this conference in December, but maybe next year, but we need to have some kind of common um, consensus, understanding, um, public commitment to do something. And otherwise that um, and we can't uh, um, 
convince other countries, particularly in the, in the developing world, um, to participate in this framework. So mm. I think that it's very important to have some kind of consensus in this area. The research institutes come out with a lot of innovations, a lot of suggestions. They rarely, I wouldn't say rarely, but not very often, they get implemented in the field. Yeah. You have to partner with those who are working in the field. Sure. Yeah, I quite understand research organizations, universities cannot go out in the field. But unless they do it, whether it's agriculture, whether it is uh, social change, I'm sure a lot of research has been done. I don't think politics has really come in our way. As an NGO, I can talk about it. We stay totally away from political parties. There are a lot of attempts to woo us and say, oh, you have influence over so many people. Why don't you come and help us? I say, no, our objective is very different. It's development of the community. You, if you could ban one piece of equipment, think about in your Indian perspective, because we probably use a bit different thing here, uh, or on activity, what would it be, thinking about this new economy? Activities which contribute to pollution of water, uh, because that's a resource which is not available mm -hmm. all the time. Pollution of water, pollution of air, which of course the environmental pollution control bodies are doing, but even, uh, say, waste management. Hmm. Uh, I think that need, I'm not saying ban it, all I'm saying is encourage it, hmm. so that the waste that is uh, just probably adding to pollution could be put, uh, put to uh, sort of wealth creation activity. What should business and management schools be teaching given the current imperatives? There are so many different views, different approaches, and probably these different approaches are based on different academic backgrounds and probably in moving towards sustainability or new economy, um, I think it's very important to have a kind of integrated uh, approaches. In management schools, uh, at the end of your stay, uh, when you graduate from there, perspective is how much am I going to earn? Values probably take a lower priority. Can we talk of priorities? I don't know whether all management schools are doing it, and I'm not talking about I am, so I'm not familiar with what they are teaching, but my impression is it is the values, the values, when, what do I mean by values? Values means respect for other human beings, social harmony. Now those aspects probably get lost in the desire to earn more money or to get to a better job. Now, nothing wrong with that, but a little more sensitivity towards the community, perhaps CSR because this is what we've been discussing mm. and I'm involved in it. Even the best schools in India, which teach uh, the social, uh, social work, they have only one or two sessions on CSR. That means creative uh, sensitivity to the community is, takes a very, very low priority, even in the best of schools. Can we do that? Then only in a developing country, developing country like India, these are the business leaders. If they have this sensitivity, they'll certainly be able to bring about bigger change in the country and much faster. Many people in universities are working on very specified um, areas and then trying to produce papers and uh, publish papers in journals. And um, these incentives um, to researchers are not necessarily compatible with uh, the request or uh, kind of demand from society to contributing to uh, this. Uh, moving towards sustainability. My uh, the biggest learning from there has been bringing in the industrial discipline of an industry into working with the community. community.